Henri Leon Lubeig was a remarkably influential French mathematician of the 19th and 20th centuries. Though he did novel research in almost every area of mathematics at his time, he is mostly known for his theory on integration, which was yielded, even more impressively, from his PhD thesis. John Charles Berkel, a 20th century English mathematician known for creating the Berkel integral, said the following of Lubeig. It cannot be doubted that this dissertation is one of the finest any mathematician has ever written. Lubeig was born on June 28, 1875, in Bouvet, Oise. His father worked as a typesetter, and his mother worked as a school teacher. With both parents sharing intellectual passions, they assembled the library within their home that Lubeig had steady access to. Lubeig also had two sisters that he never really got to know as they died from tuberculosis very young. His father ended up suffering the same fate, so Lubeig's mother had to take care of him on her own. This would have proven to be quite problematic had Lubeig's intellectual abilities gone unnoticed, which they didn't. One of his primary school teachers was quite adamant about him continuing to get his education, arranging for him to learn at Collège du Bouvet at Lycée Saint-Louis, and later at Lycée louis le Grand in Paris. In 1894, Henri began attending École Normale Supérieure, studying mathematics. He graduated in 1897 with a teaching diploma, but stayed working in the Supérieure Library, and also began working on his graduate studies at the University of Paris under Émile Borrel, a French mathematician only four years older than Lubeig, who was most known for his work on measure theory and probability. It was during this time that Lubeig became aware of René Louis Berth's research on discontinuity, Bochel's work on measure theory, and Camille Jordan's Jordan Measure. During this time period, 1898 to be precise, Lubeig published his first paper titled On the Approximation of Functions, which dealt with Weierstrass's theorem on approximation to continuous functions by polynomials. In 1899, Lubeig decided to leave his post at the Supérieur Library and took up a teaching position at the Lycée Central while still working on his PhD. From March 1899 through April 1901, Lubeig published six papers in Compte Rendu. The first paper dealt with the extension of Berth's theorem to a function of two variables. The next five dealt with surfaces applicable to a plane, the area of skew polygons, surface integrals of minimum area with a given bound, and the definition of Lubeig integration for some function f of x, with this last paper being titled On Generalization of the Definite Integral. In 1902, Lubeig finally earned his PhD from the University of Paris, his thesis being the famous integral length area, introducing the world almost wholly to his theory of integration first appearing in Annali di Mathematica, a notable scientific journal covering all aspects of mathematics. The first chapter develops the theory of measure per Bochel's theory. The second chapter defines the integral geometrically and analytically. The chapters that follow expand the definition Lubega put out in on a generalization of the definite integral, now dealing with length, area, and applicable surfaces. And the final chapters deal mainly with Plateau's problem, a problem to show the existence of a minimal surface with a given boundary. It's speculated the perfection of Lubeig's thesis stunned not just himself, but also others. And it didn't leave much room for collaboration. People began expanding on his foundation with other collaborators, leading to Lubeig being left out of the mainstream of the development his paper kicked off. It must be noted, though, that because of how revolutionary this work was, the paper was initially met with a ton of opposition before finally being accepted, and was still criticized after, both privately and in print. A good example is Jordan, who apparently tried to push Lubeig towards science and away from mathematics after seeing his theory. Despite some of the drama that seemed to unfold with Lubeig's work, the University of Rennes offered him a position, and he lectured there until 1906. Apart from his position at Rennes, he also gave lectures at Collège de France on his new theory of integration from 1902 to 1903. The material in the lectures were fit together into a paper that ended up being in Bochel's series of monographs titled Lessons on Integrating and Finding Primitive Functions. 
The lectures presented the problem of integration in its historical context, addressing work done by Augustin Cauchy, a 19th century mathematician who played a pivotal role in making mathematical analysis more rigorous, Peter Dirichli, a 19th century mathematician very well known for his contributions to the theory of Fourier series, and Bernard Riemann, another 19th century mathematician who is very well known for his Riemann integral. Lubeig's lectures then go on to present six conditions for which the integral should satisfy, showing that Lubeig's conditions lead to the theory of measure and measurable functions, presenting the analytical and geometric definitions of the integral. So why was Lubeig's theory so important? In short, the Riemann integral, which was the primary integral at the time, did not exist for many functions that needed to be dealt with. The total area of the rectangular partitions just didn't approach a single number. So that's where Lubeig's theory came in. He expanded the integral past the Riemann limit and thus tore down the wall analysts had been faced with when using the Riemann integral. In 1903, Lubeig published another paper titled On the Trigonometric Series, which presented three major theorems. The first being that trigonometric series representing bounded functions are Fourier series. The second being that the nth Fourier coefficient tends to zero, which is named the Riemann-Lubeig theorem. And that a Fourier series is integrable term by term. With this last result being especially significant because it validated Fourier's original proof that if a function was representable by a trig series, then this series is necessarily its Fourier series. From 1904 to 1905, Lubeig gave yet another series of lectures at Collège de France, where he discussed trigonometric series and went on to have his lectures published under the title Lessons on Trigonometric Series. As was the case in his lectures from 1902 to 1903, he gives historical context discussing Fourier series and work done by Cantor, Riemann, Poisson, and Dirichlet. The lectures he gave at Collège de France were sadly met with hostile response from classical analysts, especially in France, with Berg being a good example, as he was not so keen on the lectures Lubeig was giving at the college. They argued over who had the most right to teach such material, and this turned into more serious arguments later in their lives. In 1906, Lubeig moved from the University of Rennes to the Faculty of Science at the University of Poitiers, and the following year, he obtained the title of Professor of Mechanics. In 1910, Lubeig moved to the University of Paris as a lecturer, and in 1919, he was finally granted a professorship at the university. But he ended up leaving two years later to be a professor of mathematics at the Collège de France, where he would lecture, mentor, and research for the remainder of his life. In 1922, he was elected as a member to the Académie des Sciences. And by then, Lubeig had published about 90 books and papers in many areas of mathematics, which included set theory, integration theory, measure theory, and topology. He wrote at the same rate for the next 20 years on these topics, but his style became more descriptive, historical, and philosophical, with teachers being in mind when writing. Though his works after his thesis didn't get near as much recognition, Lubeig's fame and honor still grew as modern analysis became more accepted and researched amongst other mathematicians and scientists, with Lubeig's integration theory being taught as early as 1914. That may seem late considering his thesis was printed in 1902, but as mentioned, this theory was met with tons of opposition initially, so it really took some time for people to get on board. As hinted at earlier, Lubeig was not a narrow specialist. He was a great student, innovator, and teacher, with his ideas coming from thoughtful questioning of the past. He looked at it, just like Poincaré, as a necessary step in moving fields forward. One can't properly research without the observation and study of previous work. One quote from him affirms this. In order to do useful work, it is necessary to march along paths opened by previous workers. Acting otherwise, one runs too great a risk of creating a science without links with the rest of mathematics. His attention to detail is also affirmed in the following quote. The mathematician must carefully examine the domain in which he works, observe the role of the different mathematical entities with which he meets, look at them live. In brief, 
the mathematician transforms himself into a naturalist. Paul Montel, a 20th century mathematician who was a student of Borel, described Lebesgue's approach to mathematics as being suspicious of too general a theory whose formalism and verbalism repelled him. He had a geometric vision of mathematical facts and preferred synthetic insights which satisfy and nourish the mind to analytic proofs which reassure it, and that he excelled in looking at old things with new eyes. He knew the virtue of attentive examination of an example, of an anomaly, of an exception. Lubeg's ideas on teaching were as firm as his views on mathematical research. He believed living mathematics should be presented to students in a genetic style, which to him meant using historical context to motivate mathematical concepts, trying to present things simply, and really show how a mathematician can work through a problem. So he refused to remember his own lectures and routines, and generally went in impromptu. An apparent quote from Lubeg says, The only instruction which a professor can give is to think in front of his students, that they gain nothing from a solution that is satisfying from the logical, but not from the human point of view. When it came to influence, Lubeg really didn't have as much as would be expected. He wasn't political in the least, trying his best to just be independent. He pretty much only did what was necessary of him in regard to bureaucratic matters. He also had very few pupils and collaborators, which could be attributed to the opposition that he faced early on in his career. Thus, Lubeg remained doubtful of the worth of his work. Not to mention, he generally worked on whatever struck his fancy, so... So that could have also increased the lack of collaboration. When it came to romance, Lubeg married the sister of one of his fellow students at the end of 1903. The woman he married was named Louis Marguerite Vallée, and the pair had two children together, Suzanne and Jacques. Alas, their marriage didn't last, and they divorced in 1916. Not much else seems to be documented, so it seems Lubeg didn't remarry after that. So, with his death in 1941, from a seemingly unknown terminal illness, he was survived by his mother and children. Well, there you have it. A brief history of Henri Lubeg, a pioneer in patching up many of the holes that integration theory had. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll catch you next time.